What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we're gonna check out one of the problems that we run into with drop D tuning. And that is we lose some of our good old reliable bar chords. So that's what I wanna to do today. I wanna to talk a little bit about chords, uh, how to find them, how we can explore some chords, maybe find some basic drop D bar chords, and then maybe explore some new ones, okay? So I'm gonna drop D tuning. And what we are doing here, in the start, I'm gonna start with the basics. Um, it's something that I've talked about a lot on this channel, a lot, especially in my drop D videos, and that is kind of power chords and major minor chords here on the low strings, okay? So I'm sure there'll be some timestamps down in the description. So if you wanna just skip over that, you've heard me talk about it before, cool, move on to the next section. Otherwise, this is cool. We have, in our drop tuning, power chord on the low strings, right? Simple one finger power chords, but it's so much more than that. So we know that these two strings, six and four, are now tuned to the same note. So anything I play, on one string is the same as the other. So just keep that in mind. So if I'm looking at this as my root note or whatever chord I'm playing, and I play a minor scale fragment, say a whole step and a half step, meaning five to seven, seven to eight. Those are the first three notes and it's, I don't wanna say a minor scale because I'm not necessarily doing that, but it's just a minor sound, right? That pinky note four frets away is the qualifier. That's, gonna, that's the note that makes it minor or major, right? And before you tell me, it's a big stretch, Greg, I can't play that. You can, trust me, you can. It's not that hard, especially if we're just focusing on the lower strings, okay? You also have the root, the second, the minor third, and the major third, right? We all know the second. sound is extremely common, especially in that strumming style, okay? So that kind of helps us find major minor chords and we should apply that to a scale, whether that's a minor scale or a major scale, whatever you'd like to do, okay? If we're looking at it as D minor, well, that means F is our major. No longer one, we have three here. So now if I play a major scale, still hear the major scale, but I'm just playing power chords. We want to turn those into the actual chords from the scale, and that becomes very musical, and it's a great way to map out the fretboard, okay? So that's also gonna kind of tie us into the bar chord aspect of this, okay? So now let's move on to that. Well, obviously our bar chords are gone. We can't do that anymore. I can this, which you can do if you want to write some lower string parts, and that's fine, but we're looking for some chords here. We can't really do that anymore, so we know we're familiar with, say, a big power chord in drop D, which is just 5, 5, 5, 7, 8 in this position. It could be 3, 3, 3, 5, 6. This is just power chords. There's no qualifier note in there. There's no major, minor note in there. That's really on the high string. So if, if I take my middle finger here and I put it on six of the high string, well, there you go. There's my minor note. Now I have this big minor bar chord. It kind of works, given the right context. If I want to make this major, though, it gets a little uncomfortable. This note has to kind of come up by a fret, and that makes me play it like this shape, which is a little bit of a twister here, and not really fluid for moving around. Not that it can't be done, it's just not the com most comfortable thing, right? And you might recognize these little shapes as your open position, D major and D minor shapes, just with the power chord underneath it. So, that, now that 
we've kind of talked about those. How can we maybe explore these notes um, or find other chords? Another one, since we've played this minor chord here, if I play the sixth fret with that chord, I get this really hip modern sound. Right? Nice voicing. Minor, it's not sad, it's not heartbroken, it's still very colorful. Right? So, Sounds nice. It probably sounds good with the other minor, major chord. I mean, minor chord. Yeah, that's cool. I like that, right? Now, if I wanted to make this major, that means this eighth fret and sixth fret that I was playing have to come up by a half step, okay? Especially this one on the eighth, because this is the qualifier note. This makes it minor or major. That one's gotta come up. The other one could stay down, but I just, I kinda don't want that sound. Bluesy, tension filled sound, right? I want that major sound. So we kinda have to find these notes somewhere else. So to do that, we just go to the next string. So instead of playing this shape, this interval shape, you can find this note here. And you get this very comfortable, kinda like a G, but not really, just space that out a little farther shape, and that's really nice, and we can keep the other note right there, right? And we were barring this chord, so we know that this note works well, so we'll keep that there. Right? I like the way that sounds. A little bit of a complication here. You can probably flatten out, add a little bit more low end to the chord, which is kind of cool. Now, in the key of D minor, we can kind of play with this G or D Dorian. It's all right. It's still minor is related. G and F. So let's do that, right? We're playing this G major chord. Let's stick with F major. Let's take that down. Nice, cool voicing chords, and it's something new. So we've gone from simple power chords to looking at those bar chords, and then maybe finding some modern sounding original voicings, right? For those chords. Lots of fun. Drop detuning down in the description below. You can find a link for all of that stuff. And as always, let me know what you come up with. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.